But the schools, it seems to me, are deeply confused about their identity. And that includes the schools of Buffalo. I want to make it clear that I am not today speaking for BUILD. I am not a spokesman for BUILD. Um, these are my comments after four months in the city. And I would say that what I have seen of, of the Buffalo School situation is this, that what India is to food, Buffalo is to education. In the schools, there were white teachers that called me and told me what some of the white board members were doing. They would go out to the suburbs, not up to the suburbs, to South Buffalo, different places, and say, you don't want your kids to go to school with black kids. They smell, they squirt orange juice in their face. They can't learn. They're dumb. They're stupid. You don't want that. These are white teachers that came to me and told me. And I went to a meeting one time, and there it was right there. And see, you can inflame the passions of people by doing that. So we felt that the best thing to do is to tell black parents what was going on, how it was being done. And even though some of them resented the fact that we were doing this, well, you have to go along with that because if they don't know, they don't know. And they realized the fact that their reprisals from the power structure, if they stand up for us, what is true? And they know that eventually maybe somebody will come at them like they do in any, anything when you are trying to do what is right. First of all, we started with, with people and um, bringing cross-section of those persons who were interested in um, working in that area, listening to what they had to say. And I might add that uh, this cross-section of, of persons included housewives, teachers, um, uh, just uh, persons who wanted to see a change there. So in coming together, putting our minds together and deciding how we would approach this, we figured, uh, we saw that um, we really didn't have a voice in even small matters such as suspensions. And so we began by uh, putting teams together. We met with uh, Dr. Manch, the Board of Education, and we set about going inside the schools to see for ourselves exactly what was happening, to get specifics and, and then come out. And of course there were a lot of people very eager to provide us with information about how they were being affected by what was going on in our schools. The first thing they did was to do a survey of the public school system in Buffalo. That was published under the title of Bill Black Paper Number 1. And it had a profound impact. It had a, 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 a the, the reaction to that paper was, was awesome. But everything kind of took off from there because it showed how sad the educational system in Buffalo for black students at that time was, and still is. Uh, it, it was pathetic. It was awful. Uh, it, no real education was going on. Uh, children were not only being mistreated in the classrooms, there was only one black male, you know, in the whole city of Buffalo. There were no role models, in other words, for black children. Uh, and at the time of the Bill Black paper, there were no black principals. It was more or less an expose of the findings that we uh, had, had uh, when we visited the schools. And we found that our children we, we knew, but uh, the reading scores, you know, we looked at those compared to some of the uh, white uh, schools in the area. Um, we, some of the buildings weren't up to par as far structurally. Um, we had uh, children who were coming to school who really needed to be uh, a fed. That wasn't in, in, in place. We found teachers, you could go to one classroom and it would be, per you could see the learning going on. You go, go to the next class and it would be complete chaos. Something, you know, there, it wasn't adding up. So we were seeing that, you know, there was a, a, a disparity between teaching and what was going on inside the classroom. 
there were no, there wasn't the involvement of the community. We find largely that there were uh, black schools, but largely white staffs. And so there were a number of things that we felt needed to be uh, documented. And so we, the result was a black paper. We had a lot of altercations. Uh, <clears throat> many of them were used to dramatize an issue or to, uh, uh, to garner attention or get media coverage or whatever. Alfreda Sominski, who was a councilwoman and who was opposed to portable classrooms, which was a big issue at that time because the, we were trying to get into some form of desegregation and, uh, and she was opposed to setting up these portable classrooms around schools to make to, to make more room for minority students to be bused in. So we just kind of went down there to let her know that uh, uh, we thought that was a racist view and a racist act on her part, and we were not intending to let her get away with it. The common council doesn't want us coming down there telling them what to do. So when we went down to tell them that they were gonna do something about these deplorable conditions in the community, especially about education, there was a fallout. So we just let them know that we weren't going to take it anymore. They're going to have to dance to our music. This is our community. City Hall was part of a larger campaign to force the city and the Board of Education to recognize Martin Luther King Day as a, as a, as a local holiday. And uh, I think basically that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to, uh, to focus attention on the fact that City Hall was uh, conducting business as usual on that day. And we had been able to get many of these school children and their parents and teachers and others to boycott schools on that day and to go down to City Hall and do a teaching. The signing of this agreement is the result of many months of hard negotiation on the part of the Bill's Education Committee. Bill's reason for creating the Bill Academy is to fight for a real quality education for black students. The objectives of the Academy are to secure strong, effective community participation in educational decision making through Bill, to develop high quality education for ghetto schools to develop more creative teachers. Bill wants it clearly understood that we will not be a party to another glorified experiment. When the objectives which we have outlined have been realized, then and only then can the Academy be considered a success. Uh, we at the State University College see many advantages in this three-way arrangement. We think this is a fruitful and active way for the community, for the Board of Education, and for the State University College to work together towards the important goals which have been outlined here this morning and which are contained in this Memorandum of Understanding. We hope that this will help us develop new and better ways of preparing teachers for working with people in cities, 
This is one of the most important things which a college such as ours can do, and for that reason we're particularly happy to be a part of this three-way understanding. The proposal which was written was an offshoot, uh, really adapted from the proposal that had been written in Chicago uh, for a similar project. And I saw it as the wave of the future. We were a determined group of people that we saw that we could get some entrance, but we had to be uh, steadfast in our efforts, which we were. Um, there were a lot of parents that called on us because they knew that we were out there to uh, work in their behalf. We had started out meeting with uh, the Board of Education, with um, State Teachers College, and the organization, which were the three entities that were involved in the education of children. And so it wasn't an easy task because power and institutional changes don't come easily. So when we signed a memorandum of understanding, we had 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 to go through quite a few, um, con well, you might say confrontations or uh, coming to an understanding of, of even getting to that point. So it was a great day. Well, first of all, I didn't pull them from School 48. This class was abandoned by the Board of Education. And their parents, uh, working along with us, have decided that something has to be done. And that's why they're here. We're concerned about their education, and uh, we're going to see that they get one, one way or another. There was a third grade teacher who had been out on maternity leave. And the teacher who came in had demonstrated her caring for the children and she had um, communicated with the parents and they were encouraged with what was going on in that uh, classroom. And when the other teacher came back, the Board of Education wanted to bring her back and displace the teacher that had built up some trust and um, communication between the parents and the children. And so they asked that this teacher remain. Board of Education said no. This sort of thing happened in our schools all the time. Uh, this teacher apparently uh, was being uh, very effective. She had uh, visited most of the homes and, and talked to most of the parents and she uh, was very close to the student. We thought she was doing a great job. and. And she had uh, uh, communicated with our organization about some, some concerns that she had in the schools. And when the schools found out about that, we felt that uh, that was the reason that they, they transferred her at the end of December. And we thought that was a very uh, uh, terrible thing to do to the students, students and the parents. And so we suggested to the board if they did that, uh, we want to take that class out of school because what the board was doing was abandoning that class. Um, as I see it, this is the first effective stand that parents have taken against the poor quality education that they are getting in the Buffalo public school system. From past, my own past experience, I know it's through them and only through them that any kind of change is going to take place. And I'm willing as a teacher to offer my services to them in hopes that some change might take place. What we were doing at that time was trying to make school officials responsible for what was happening in their schools. Uh, what happened uh, normally is that if, a, if kids did well, the school officials took credit for it. If kids did poorly, the school officials blamed their homes and their environment and other things on it. So we were just saying that you can't have it both ways. If you're going to take credit for when the kids do well, then you need to take the blame for when they don't do well. And a lot of kids at school for they were not doing that well. 
And they had this principle there that we didn't think was that effective. And we thought it would be better if uh, either she took some blame and took some responsibility or they changed and got a new principle. But as these reports on this principle came in, it became apparent that this was a lady probably who at one time had been a very good teacher, but she had outstayed her use usefulness. She was a senior citizen. She had more than enough time to retire. And she simply was not in control of that school. A lot of bad things were happening there. I thought we got great support from the students' parents. And then after a while, the students were on television every night because the TV camera was covering, the TV station was covering the, uh, the event quite, quite thoroughly, and every day as a matter of fact. And so the word began to spread around. I think that you have to remember, we're talking uh, 1968, uh, 1969, and a lot of uh, African Americans were not accustomed to challenging uh, institutions of authority. Uh, and so I think a lot of them were amazed uh, that we had the daring to take on the Board of Education and uh, any other institution, the, the police department. But, uh, and I think that gave them encouragement. So on, on one end, I think we got quite a bit of support. And, and more than that, I think we created a lot of encouragement for people in the community. And so there was a sort of um, a, a, a stand taken. And the result of that, and there were many articles every day about threats that were made to the parents, threats that were made to the organization and the community, and uh, that our wishes were not going to be uh, answered. And uh, the result of that, though, was, and the, the uh, resolution was that we would begin the academy with this third grade class. As a member of the board who was selecting the chief officer, was interested in trying to find a good person to be the chief officer of the academy. What happened was, after interviewing many, many people, other members of the board suggested that I might make a better candidate than those who had appeared. So I kind of switched and went around and sat on the other side uh, and was interviewed, and, accept and they accepted me as that candidate for chief officer of the Build Academy. Principal traditionally was one who had been appointed by the Board of Education, probably had the favor of some of the higher management, and were placed in a school and uh, with, with no thought of whether that person could relate to or should be in the school that they were assigned to. Chief Officer, on the other hand, was a person who had uh, been come through a process where the community was involved in the selection process and knowing that we expect, had expectations of being uh, uh, recognized and also being uh, working with the community within that school. So the chief officer wasn't just appointed in the normal fashion, but came through a process of community involvement in that decision. Well, I remember being very excited. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the other thing that I remember is that we had a bus strike. And so we all had to go out and organize uh, uh, transportation to get our kids, our, our first daring kids into Bill Academy. It wasn't that many because there was a great deal of hesitation on the part of a lot of African American parents as to whether or not the Bill Academy was going to be a qualitative uh, experience. And so uh, we were excited and we didn't want to lose uh, the support that we had. So I think the entire Bill organization uh, was out there driving and picking up kids and, 
and doing whatever we could to make the Bill Academy a success. For the first time, we had um, an institution that was of the people, by the people, and our intention was for it to be for the people, not just special interests or persons who had been placed there through their allegiance or whatever through the Board of Education, but that they wanted to be there, that they have a, a, a desire to see our children learn, and uppermost was the fact that they would respect and include the community in that decision-making process. The thing I admire most about Dr. King was upon his graduation from Boston University with a PhD degree, he turned down several opportunities to teach at other universities or large pulpits and returned to the South to become pastor of a small Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. I believe Dr. King was sincere in his desire to help people. He wanted to remain close to people and to share in their suffering and their problems and do what he could to alleviate them. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. Do you believe those lines? Yes. Of the black man has come and gone. Is there something wrong inside our minds or is it still the system which holds us down? At Bill's last convention, April 25, 1969, 1,400 delegates representing the black community voted to have the Board of Education designate the birth date of Dr. Martin Luther King a legal school holiday. This resolution was taken to the Board of Education and rejected. The insistent denial on the part of the Board of Education clearly indicates the Board's inability to respond to the desires and needs of the black community. Because of the, of the uh, tremendous contribution that Dr. King made to all people, because the time has come for blacks to demonstrate self-pride and self-respect, because the wishes of the black community must be positively dealt with, Bill proclaims January 15, 1970, a legal holiday to be observed by closing of all schools, the closing of all business activities, and the withdrawal from all labor. Do we plan on talking to the mayor about it? Indeed, we do. Before January 15th, Mr. Bill, Mr. Uh, I don't even know if we could find the mayor before January the 15th, but whenever we can find him, that's when we'll talk to him about it. But we don't plan to be ignored. I don't see how the city administration can ignore uh, one-fourth of its population. sent out a call and we asked black businesses to close on that day. We went up and down Jefferson asking black businesses to close. And at that time we had a group called the Deacons for the Defense. And anybody who indicated that they, they weren't going to close their business would got a visit from the Deacons. And uh, initially uh, a man who shall rename, remain nameless at that point owned the liquor store. Uh, he has since moved his liquor store to Ferris Street, but he was on Jefferson in those days. Uh, said that he wasn't going to close. 
and uh, the deacon said, well, we advise you to close. So when we went to check, he was closed and had a great big black thing in honor of Dr. King on his door. So all of the businesses closed at our, at our humble request. This is something that should take place, and um, we set about. And of course, the only recourse we had in those days, it wasn't like um, you could sit down and let's reason together. This is a, an issue that should be recognized and that it's legitimate. But we're always forced to resort to our people, uh, people power. And that was through um, demonstrations. And uh, eventually, the next year, we did have this holiday. It's Martin Luther King Day. And in commemoration of the occasion, the Build Academy pre-kindergarten class will offer us a musical presentation. During a recess, Federation President Thomas Hobart explained the Federation's concern over yesterday's incident, and the teacher involved, Norman Spock, revealed that his family had received threats on his life. Yesterday in Genesee Humboldt Junior High School, intervention by community groups caused a breakdown within the educational process. The Buffalo Teachers Federation has become involved in this on behalf of all of the school buildings in the city of Buffalo and are supporting the Genesee Humble faculty and the teacher involved in a hope to bring about better education for the children in the city of Buffalo. My job is to educate children. Before I can educate children in the morning, I must have all the students in my classroom. As I was in the hall, I had to grab one of the students who wouldn't go into his classroom. He in turn assaulted me and I struck back. When I arrived home last night, I was greeted by my three-year-old daughter who said, they're gonna kill you, daddy. My wife was in tears because she was getting threatening phone calls all day long. And last night we had to stay with some friends. Board of Education member Carmelo Parlato attended the meeting. Mr. Parlato, what action do you think the board should take on such incidents? Well, first of all, the entire situation should be thoroughly studied. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, there is clearly enough information at this point to warrant a board policy that uh, no representative of BUILD should be permitted inside that building. There was uh, an altercation between a teacher and uh, one of the students there. And he had come and, like so many um, uh, suspensions, 
it was always assumed that the student was the one who was in the wrong. And in this instance, this uh, child had suffered a cut in, on his forehead. He had suffered um, um, being he, his story. Uh, he had been thrown into a wall, and um, the teacher had um, had brutalized him, assaulted him. So the norm would be that the student is suspended, and then the mother or who the parents are. I say mothers because many times they're mothers that are involved, fathers, if they're in the family. They're always fathers in the family, but many times it's left to the mother to go to school because sometimes she's the one who's, who's at home. And so, the, and, and, and many times the person, the teacher involved, didn't have to show up at all. And so it was just assumed that the child was in the wrong and we were not going to settle for that. Concerned parents who attend this meeting of the Genesee Humboldt School fully support the faculty and administration and have complete confidence and trust that they have the best interest of the children at heart. How will the parents uh, support the teachers in their efforts? We will uh, be at school on the opening day, which we hope will be Monday morning and we will help the fac faculty of the school, Genesee Humboldt, by being present in the classrooms, in the cafeteria, in the corridors, and doing all our part, whatever we can, to help the faculty. How long will you be here? As long as we are needed. The support of my colleagues at Genesee Humboldt has been tremendous. The leadership and support provided by the Buffalo Teachers Federation has resulted in a positive approach to this resolution. Their action assures me and all teachers that similar situations will not occur. I urge all Buffalo teachers to support the positive program which the BTF and the Genesee Humboldt teachers have worked to develop so that we can create an atmosphere in which all teachers are free to teach and all students are free to learn. Bill feels that the boycott of the Genesee Humboldt Junior High School by the teachers reflect an attitude that could be the major cause of substandard education in ghetto schools. These teachers have rallied to the support of a teacher who openly confessed his guilt and requested to be transferred. Are the same teachers who are being asked to deal with the sensitive problem of making education relevant and meaningful to black kids. Bill says, these same teachers must be made accountable to the parents and communities whose children serve. This act on the part of a few frightened and apparently insecure teachers must be dealt with by the Board of Education in the same manner it deals with the delinquent students. As a result, we took that on as an issue and it developed into quite a, a confrontation between the teachers union, the community, the Board of Education, and um, eventually they are not wanting us to be in the schools at all and and showing that um, even through this as say you know if you question anything or question it too loudly go away or we won't deal with you and we weren't going to settle for that and you know what the results of the situation was and what came out of it if any well the child did get back um, into school and I think what came out of it was that it was another demonstration of the fact that the community was not going to just stand by and allow uh, this to be a one-sided situation where children were concerned and their rights. And it was no longer going to be the teacher is always right 
and the pupil is always wrong. But we wanted to be on a more level um, field. And so I think from that, that um, all of those in, in entities involved with the schools recognize that they were going to have to answer to someone and not just do the suspensions and, and uh, in the normal way. I had been a classroom teacher and I had been working at Woodlawn Junior High School and Woodlawn Junior High School was also a site where we'd had some problems as far as the community was concerned so I sort of had become active then and when I saw the recruitment bulletin for Build Academy that was what I needed to be involved in. I didn't really go there wanting to be the chief officer. I went there as a fourth grade teacher it was after one year that the administration was going to be changed and I was available and some people suggested that I might be the person to head the academy and I was interviewed and selected. Johnny Mayo was excellent. She had, um, and, and I'm always using courage, which, which, which it took, because Johnny had um, even in the face of, of some of her peers who did not understand some of what we were trying to accomplish in the community, had, uh, in spite of that, chosen to align herself as a teacher at the academy. And you must understand, there was a lot of negative ne negativeness about the um, development of Bill Academy. It was called the Black Academy, the Ghetto Academy, and there were even some black teachers who did not want to align or, or um, associate themselves with the academy. Johnny Mayo was a visionary and she understood what the community was attempting to do and she wanted to be a part of it. We always felt that self-image was really important so whenever you walked into BUILD you would find images like the children, you would find that they were able to look up on their walls and see pictures of people like themselves, you would find that in our library you would, there were books that these children could find easily that were written by people like themselves and written about people like themselves. And so when we had assembly programs, those programs were geared to that same goal, to make these children know about their heritage, to know about their history, and to be proud of that. Because self-image probably is about 90% a part of what a person becomes. <laughs>